Hi friends, welcome to the video lectures on technical zig by Shravan Kumar Mantri. In my series of video lectures regarding this the subject of technical zig, uh, I explained about the first thing is multiple choice questions in C with explanation. So I completed in two parts like one is top 100 C MCQs, then next 50 MCQs totally I completed 150 MCQs. If you want you can watch all those things in my previous video lectures. So where you can find these uh, with these titles like top 100 C MCQs and another one is next 50 MCQs. And afterwards I, I explained about coding part that is coding for some typical problems in C like the concepts of uh, concept of loops, patterns, arrays like this. I am explaining one by one. In this series I completed the concept of loops with some typical problems like number based problems. So how easily you can implement. So that I explained and patterns in C. So I explained with some tips and tricks how easily you can implement a pattern. So some with simple tricks. So that also I explained and about arrays. So some programs with clear explanation, some typical programs with clear expression that also I completed all these three. I explained and you can watch all these things in my previous video lectures. You can check it out in my channel CAC Gurus. And now I am going for the concept of pointers, of course, which is very, very important. Sometimes it feels like complex in terms of understanding. So I am going with some easy manner, how easily you can understand this concept of pointers and especially how you can convert the programs which you are implementing in maybe in simple programs or by using arrays, strings or whatever it may be. So how you can connect with the pointers. So all those things we will see now. So how easily you can implement understand the concept of pointers first afterwards how we can write the programs and also and also we'll go for the concept of dynamic memory allocation so which is based on first thing is with pointers how dynamically we can allocate the memory. So that is also the concept where you can go for C alloc, M alloc and realloc concept and now not only that I'll explain one scenario based problem like uh, how many balls will be bowled in an over so we can say that six balls will be bowled but let us suppose if there is a no bar wide so there should be one extra ball how this can be analyzed definitely this can be done dynamically and how you can implement whenever a set of um, a scoreboard is given for a particular over how many runs are scored how you can consider and how you can maintain the scoreboard how to get the output as so here I want to explain a real time example like how many runs scored in an over. So let me take if it is a six balls in an over I'll take simply an array six balls six run um, six different might be six different va six values I'll give and I can check it out how many runs scored maybe wickets how many wickets but what about if there is a no bar wide maybe the array size is not fixed so how you can increase and how to do this one I can implement this one by using concept of dynamic memory allocation that also we'll see in the next coming video lectures so first we'll go for the concept of pointers now so remember this listen this concept carefully why because this concept if you learn then only you can go for the concept of dynamic memory allocation then only you can understand the concept of structures with pointers then only you can understand the concept of linked list in data structures so these are all required when you go for linked list concepts and of course I am highlighting the, all these things like loops, patterns, arrays, whatever the programs I am explaining, I am highlighting and I am explaining with respect of students who are mostly, who are preparing for placements. So I am keeping in mind of mostly the students who are preparing for placements. So these are not simple programs I am explaining, I am explaining some typical programs which are very very important and you can get the logics, how easily you can implement. So concept of pointers we can go now. So before going to this theory part just let me explain how a pointer can be defined in a program. A simple program I'll take first afterwards I'll explain these terms. So let us suppose I'll write a simple line like int a equals to 20. So let us suppose if I write int a equals to 20 what is the meaning in general what happens inside the compiler. So for a variable 
so value will be taken the 20 for a and it will be stored in a particular memory location so let us suppose the memory location is 2450 in a particular memory location and anyway, weight is integer now it will be allocated with four bytes and in this four bytes the value 20 will be stored so this is what happens when you declare int a equals to 20 if you declare so the value 20 will be assigned to a and the variable a is stored in one memory location some address so that address I'm taking it as 2450 now let us suppose I'll write like this int pointer p some asterisk so I'm not writing simply int p I'm writing int asterisk p so I'm prefixing with asterisk now I call this pointer p as like now I call p is a pointer variable it's not simple variable here you can see a it's a simple variable it's p is a pointer variable why because I prefixed with a asterisk so now I call it as a pointer variable that means I can store the value of a memory location in P so let us suppose if I give like this P will be created and this also will be stored in some address now so like this sign now what is the value inside might be null sometimes of course this is also explained with some other concepts like what is dangling pointer void pointer null pointer like this but anyway assume it as null initially that means I am not assigning with any value now I'll write one simple statement like P is equals to address of A. What is ampersand means address. Now if I write like this what happens you can see. Now ampersand A ampersand means we know that address. Address of A. What is A is a variable. What is the address of A? 2450. Now this 2450 here you are assigning to P. That means what is P value? Here you can see the value of p inside is now 2450 like this you can say now so now you can see what is the value you are you stored in p that is a value which is a address of another variable now why you are taking p p is taking the variable p is using to store the address to store the address of another variable so now i can say a pointer is a variable that means now p is a pointer it is a variable which is used to store the address of another variable now what p stores 2450 which is the address of another variable so that's why we call pointer is a variable which used to store the address of another variable now you may ask a doubt like uh, why this uh, why like this we need to store why don't we store like simple can we write like int p simply so what is the advantage here if I write int asterisk p so now you can see a simple program like now you can observe here if I write p equals to address of a let us suppose what is p value now I'm assigning with address of a now I'm writing here the values first initially what is a we know that 20 what is address of a we know that 2450 now what is p now we assigned with what address of a so now what is p it is 2450 now if i want to get the value 20 if i want to get the value 20 simply you want to print a but can you get with the pointer variable p yes you can get how to get you can see now so p is a address p is a value which is a address now i will write i will write pointer p the meaning is if I write hashtag P or pointer P means the meaning is that what is the value inside of this address that means pointer P means pointer 2450 that means you have to go to the, the com it is telling the compiler that compiler has to go to the address 2450 and check it out what is the value so it will go to 2450 and what is the value 20 so the answer is 20 now what is pointer p 20 20 now you can see so that means by using pointer also i can get the answer as 20 that means pointer of p means you can get the value inside the p inside the address so now i am here if i write if i print a that means you are getting the value directly but if you print the value with p you are getting the value indirectly that is with pointer indirectly with address so when you want to get the value with address then you can use pointer p so that means in real time examples also 
you can observe sometimes you don't want the value directly sometimes you want to get the value in a particular address let us suppose uh, uh, something like you will get some ideas even in your when you want to go for a particular channel you just want to type the channel number in your tv tv remote so tv remote let us suppose if i take one something like something 225 if you type in tv remote so you the tv will be displayed with a channel so what is the channel that means the channel is identified by a particular number this number you call it as address so that means you are telling the remote like you are telling that you have to go to a particular id what is the channel which is identified with that number that will be displayed that means here you are getting the channel with respect to the reference you are not typing the channel name so you are just typing a number so that you are getting the channel that means you are referencing with a particular id and you are similar to that here you are referencing with a particular address and what is inside the address will be displayed so here i am going to 2450 and what is the value inside 20 that will be displayed now you can observe if i write p equals to ampersand a can i say pointer p is equals to a yes so that means p equals to address of a what is address of a 2450 so i am assigning to p means now you can see if i print pointer p what you will get pointer of so it will go to the pointer of what is p 2450 so what is the value inside of it 20 so that means if i write p equals to address of a pointer p equals to a so that means if i print p and ampersand a you will get the same value if you print pointer p and a you will get the same value so here you can see a simple program like a equals 20 i have given pointer p p equals to address of a i have given that means so p value will be here 2450 now if i print a what is a value 20 will be printed here pointer p means pointer of 2450 so value inside the 2450 that is 20 will be printed here ampersand a that is 2450 and here p that means p equals to what you have written address of a that is 2450 anyway i have written here percentile fee p which is a form format specifier used for pointers of course you can use anything like uh, percentile x percentile d also but if you use percentile p it will be represented in hexadecimal format so like this you can represent anyway again i'll come to this program i'll execute before that we'll go for th our theory part yeah it's a pointer is a special kind of variable so why it is a special kind of variable of course in terms of representation also we have prefixed with asterisk so simply if you declare you write p but if you want to make a pointer variable you have to write asterisk p and one more thing you remember p means address you will get the address pointer p means you will get the value value inside the address like this you remember so a pointer is a constant or variable that uh, contains the address that can be used to access the data so it is a p which is used to access the data which is address these are designed for storing the memory addresses of another variable that i told you now so p is a variable which stores the address of another variable in our example that is a variable a declaring pointer is same as declaring a normal variable so both i declared same except you stick an asterisk is that right like you can see here i have written here a equals 20 here int of course the same but asterisk is extra that's it if you prefix with asterisk you can say that it's a pointer variable there are two new operators you will find here one is asterisk and another one is address address of address which gives the address of the variable stored in a memory location and dereferencing operator this pointer or asterisk you call it as dereferencing operators and both are of course unary operators we know about unary operators which operate on only one variable now we'll see this program and uh, we'll execute this program and we'll check it out how the output you will get and also we'll check for some operations also so the same program i'm executing now you can see here how the output will be here that means the first i'm printing a and pointer p both should be same that is equals to 20 and here ampersand a and p 
so both should be printed as address i don't know we don't know like which address it has taken but both the values must be same we'll see this output and here you can see a equals to 20 pointer p equals to 20 same and here also the addresses you can see both you got the same thing of course it is represented in some hexadecimal format why because i have written in percentile p you can change it you can get different values now this is simply like how you can represent in terms of pointer we'll take some simple operation like i'll take two numbers and i'll make some arithmetic operation so let us suppose i'll take something like b which is equals to 30 command and i'll take one more variable and i'll take one more pointer q and now p equals to address of a i have taken and of course i'll take q q equals to i'll take in address of b so that means here p represents address of a q represents address of b if i say pointer p means you will get 20 if i say pointer q means i'll get 30 so let us suppose i'll add these two whether we'll get the answer or not let us suppose i'll write directly so here if i write a plus b and here i'll write pointer p plus pointer q what we'll get we'll see now So you can see the answer directly so how you can represent how you can use that means whatever the variable you have taken so if it is represented with pointers so how you can add like this you can consider and of course there are some uh, constraints like when to add when all operations are not allowed so that is also I'll explain in the next so but in simple how you can write the program by using the pointers we can see now like this so now what about the concept of arrays how arrays are linked with the pointers special and one more thing we can say that arrays are one type of pointers so why we have to say arrays are one type of pointers so in next we'll see the concept of like pointers and arrays how they are related so sometimes we can say that arrays are one type of pointers why we are saying arrays are one type of pointers what is that special property that arrays has with respect to the pointers so we'll see all those things in the next video lecture thank you